Howdy, Tinker Nerd family, and welcome to another Fantasgrate comment show for my Ultrasonic Madness video. Click here if you haven't seen it yet. I would wait for you to finish, but you could just click pause. Well done. All right, let's see what you guys had to say. Farts are just ghosts of the food we eat. You clever little Goomba, I see what you did there. If you beam can turn electricity to ultrasound and back, can we turn bats ultrasound into electricity? Not a bad idea. Let's see if it works. Nope. Plenty of ultrasonic, but I don't see any madness. Geez, ultrasonic, how come you never do what I want to do? You're always making some type of noise whenever I'm trying to talk. Would it kill you for once to just listen? Ultrasonic, sometimes you just make me so mad. And there you have it, folks. Ultrasonic madness. So in theory, you could make a 3D map of a room using ultrasound. That idea is totally plausible. In fact, Christopher Nolan suggested that concept in his Dark Knight movie. Man, that would be really awesome, wouldn't it? At 2.47, hell oh well. The truth is, if you pause this video at any point, I guarantee you will probably find a funny face. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. Let's see how many funny faces I've made in this video alone. What is wrong with me? Why you no remove background noise? It was actually a microphone settings fail. I had the sensitivity set too high on the microphone, but I didn't realize it until I'd finished filming everything, and I didn't want to go back and have to refilm it. So in post-production, I cranked up the volume, creating the hiss. I didn't remove it because I thought that once I added the background music, you couldn't really hear it so much and most people wouldn't notice. I could not have been more wrong. The funny thing is, I didn't want the same thing to happen to this video, so I adjusted the sensitivity again, but I got it wrong again. Take a listen. Howdy, Tinker Nerd family, and welcome to another Fantasgrate comment show. Another Tinker Nut fail, brought to you by yours truly. Won't all these ultrasonic devices just annoy animals? It's true that a lot of ultrasonic frequencies can be heard by animals. But there's even some ultrasonic frequencies that animals can't hear, so we could just use those. Otherwise, it's a good way to keep away pests. Feels really bad that you're losing your viewership. I hope your viewership recovers soon. Good luck. This comment got me wondering if I really was losing my viewership, so I decided to take a look and see. Okay, so this is a viewership graph for the last year. The months tend to vary a lot, but as a whole, it seems like my viewership may actually be on the incline, especially considering that since I started this new video format in July, my views have been almost as much as they were since last August. So overall, my viewership, if anything, has remained pretty constant. Anyways, thanks for the good luck, because it seems to be working. I was just curious, do you know how fast you could potentially send data over ultrasonic sound? It travels pretty fast, but not as fast as electromagnetic waves. But I think the problem with current ultrasonic data transmission is hardware limitations and the amount of time it takes to translate audio strings back to data. You can kind of compare it to how old dial-up modems used to be. But once we overcome that hurdle, I think that it could be a viable contender for wireless. Alright guys, keep an eye on my Tinkernut Remix channel where I'm going to be starting a new series called Tinkernut Labs where I'm going to show off a lot of my how-to projects. In this case, I'm going to start off with some of my ultrasound projects that I've created. If you would like to donate to my channel, I now accept Bitcoin so you can either scan this QR code or just click on it. Also, if you'd like to become a patron of my show, you can visit my Patreon campaign at patreon.com Tinkernut. Alright guys, I will see you all next time with a new tutorial.